Hey guys, um, welcome to my eight week pregnancy update. So sorry if the camera seems like it's maybe tilted down. I have it like perched on a blow up mattress right now. So um, hopefully next update, well, hopefully in the next couple updates, it'll get fixed. But right now we're in my bedroom and um, we've been sleeping on a blow up mattress because we're trying to sell our old house, which we just got contingent. So soon we'll be getting like our legit bed in and then I'll probably be able to like perch you up on an actual dresser. But for this week and maybe next week, this is just how it's gonna be. So sorry about that. Anyway, yes, this is um, my first pregnancy update for baby number three. So if you are new here and just joining me. This is my third pregnancy. I've had two other pregnancies, obviously. Um, both boys. My first pregnancy was in 2018 and my second one was in 2020. And now here I am again and it is 2022 and I am pregnant with baby number three. Usually on my weekly pregnancy updates, I just kind of go about like how I'm feeling um, I talk about if there, I've, I've had like a doctor's appointment or anything like that. Um, usually I like to say like facts about the baby because I think that's interesting. So I think that's kind of, I'm going to just do about the same. I'm hoping I can do weekly updates like I did last time, well my last two times. Because um, I think they're fun and fun to look back on. Um, but we'll see. It's definitely harder to do updates this time just because I now have two kids and I don't have as much free time as I used to. So I will do my very best to do this. So eight weeks pregnant. Baby is the size of a grape. I was getting my phone out to double check, but I know. The baby is the size of a grape. I do know that. I was also reading um, the tooth buds are starting to form. And I think they were saying like the fingers and toes are starting to form. Webbed, of course, but they're starting to form. Also, the placenta is starting to form this week. and starting to like create the hormones and nutrition for the baby. Um, so those are like the big things this week. So how I'm feeling, I am feeling so nauseous. Um, up until the past like day or so, like I felt like I was managing it fine. My nausea started, I feel like it started really early, like maybe five weeks or so. Um, and in the beginning it was like every so often it would come and go and then like if I ate it would go away for a little while and basically it was just bad if I was hungry and then it kind of manifested into it was constant nausea but I've been taking a B6 and a Unisom every night and that seems to be helping me a ton with that and so that was keeping the nausea um, away and then as time grew on it was like the nausea was okay, but at night, like about five o'clock on, it would just be miserable and I would be very, very nauseous. And the past like day or so, like yesterday and today, the nausea has been really, really, really bad. Um, I have no energy. <laughs> um, I'm super nauseous all the time. Um, the nausea is so bad that I don't even want to drink water because that doesn't even sound good. Like it just sounds like I'm going to puke everything up. I really only want bland things and even then I have to like force myself to eat. Otherwise, I won't. And, uh, sorry about that. Otherwise, I won't and I will um, just be miserable and... I, I think I'm nauseous because I'm not eating a ton and the nausea isn't helping me eat and the hardest part about this whole nausea thing is you don't feel hunger pains anymore at least where I am like I don't feel hunger pains all I feel 100% of the time is nausea and so it's like a normal person would feel hunger pains you would eat and then you would feel better. But for me, I feel nauseous the whole time. I eat and then I don't feel better. I just continue to feel nauseous. 
So in my head, I'm like, why am I eating? <laughs> If, first of all, the food doesn't even sound good, and second of all, it, I don't feel better after I eat. So, um, yeah, recently that's really been a struggle. I was really hoping that, like, the Unisom and the B6 would help, and I do think it's helping a little. Um, I didn't take Unisom and B6 my last pregnancy with Porter, and I remember I had really, really bad um, nausea like the whole first trimester. So I knew it was gonna be bad again this time, but I was hoping that the medicine would kind of like hold it off, but it's been really, really hard. It's been really bad. So anyway, I've been having really bad nausea. My hair has been falling out like crazy, and I don't know if that's pregnancy related or not. It could just be like, we're in the summer. It's like, uh, well, today's September 1st. So it's still like super hot outside. So I don't know if I'm just like shedding because of the hot outside or if it's like pregnancy related, but I swear I always have strands of hair coming off and it's so annoying. I'm feeling very bloated this time. Um, it already looks like I have a belly, which I know it's not. I mean, maybe it's like my uterus expanding or something with this being like the third baby. Maybe my body is just like, yep, been here two times before, I know what I'm doing, and just like poof, balloons up. Um, but yeah, it's already like my pants are already starting to get tight, which is just like mind blowing to me because I know the baby's the size of a grape, so it's not the baby causing it. Um, but yeah, I think. I've read that like the more pregnancies you've had, um, the the faster it is that you get bigger. And I think the bigger you get too. Like I was bigger with Porter than I ever was with Grayson. So we'll see, but yeah, I already feel huge. I haven't weighed myself. Um, I did go to, the doc to a doctor's appointment and they weighed me but like it's never a good weight because like I have all my clothes on and then my shoes on too and I step on a scale so when I did that it was 129 I want to say pre-pregnancy weight I was probably like 126 127 um so one of these days like right before I get in the shower I'll have to like weigh myself but I haven't been able to do that yet I am so so tired you'll probably see me yawning several times throughout this video or maybe I'll be an amazing editor and edit them out but I am so so tired um, I've been sleeping through the night for the most part I just have to pee really really bad when I wake up in the mornings but I think I'm just like drained from like creating this child <laughs> and I'm busy with two kids trying to sell a house trying to like move into this new house, clean this, keep this house clean, make dinner, like yada yada, like my life is very busy and so I'm just like drained, like yesterday and today I really felt like just very, very tired, very tired um, and the problem is, is like I usually drink coffee and it's like Lately, it's been sometimes I'll drink coffee and sometimes like it just doesn't even sound appetizing And so I'll just go without coffee. So it really just kind of depends I'll probably have coffee today because I'm like dragging so bad and I feel bad because like I have zero energy to give to the kids my two kids I have a four-year-old and an almost two-year-old and so I feel bad that like I'm just laying around and not you know playing with them or taking them on adventures and stuff because I'm feeling so crummy. So, got some mom guilt going on there. My first symptom that I knew I was pregnant was my boobs got very tender, specifically my nipples, they got very tender. They're not tender anymore, thank goodness. They feel much more normal, but yes, that was my first symptom because I really didn't get nauseous until like maybe a week after I found out I was pregnant or so, or maybe two weeks, so yeah, it was definitely that. I'm not really having any cravings. Um, before the nausea got really bad, like these past two days, I was in a really snacky mood, so I went to the store and bought like tons of snacks, Chex Mix, 
um, pretzels, like braided, the honey braided pretzels that are so, so good. Popcorn, I've recently gotten into popcorn. Different stuff like that, but with my nausea being so bad right now, like none of that really sounds good, except maybe the pretzels. Maybe I'll try those after this video. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, no real cravings for any food, except in the very beginning, I was craving like cinnamon, cinnamon anything, like cinnamon donuts. Um, where Anthony and I are from, there's this farm and they make uh, fall flavored donuts and um, all types of cinnamon flavor and um, they're really really good and so I was craving that for a bit but now that I'm nauseous I, I don't really crave that anymore but maybe it'll come back around when my nausea goes away. <laughs> I uh, will have to check back in my previous updates of my pregnancies because I don't remember when the nausea went away. I want to say it was it's probably around 12 weeks, 12, 13, 14 weeks. I, I really don't know though. I'm kind of scared to know because I don't want to know how much longer I have of this. So maybe it's better to just like stay in the dark. Um, if you guys have any, any um, ideas on how to help with nausea, please Put it in the comments down below. I have tried lots of different things throughout the years of being pregnant and having nausea. I've tried ginger candies. Um, I really don't like the taste of ginger, so it's really hard for me to do take those, and I don't really remember them doing much for me. Um, I've tried like the C bands, like they have these bands with like pressure points on them to like on your wrist and that's supposed to help. I tried that my last pregnancy and I, it didn't do anything. I'll have to like look around and see if I can find them again and maybe it'll help. Um, right now all I'm really doing is just um, B6 <laughs> and Unisom. Um, last pregnancy I took a lot of Dramamine like non-drowsy Dramamine, so maybe I should try that. I'm not sure, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling like being happy and peppy for you guys in this video because I just feel so crummy. Now that I'm at, at the eight weeks, usually why I start doing like weekly updates at week eight is because that's usually when I have my first doctor's appointment. So I did, I had my first doctor's appointment. I'll tell you guys about it. It went really well. Um, I actually switched doctors, so I've had the same OBGYN for my first two pregnancies, and I was all set to have her for my third pregnancy, but her schedule just didn't work with mine. She was like, her only good days are Wednesdays, that's like the worst day for me, so I just switched to another doctor, um, and so I met her for the first time, and she was super nice, super easygoing, she was just like the other doctor, so I think we're going to get along just fine. Um, they had me do paperwork, which is kind of silly because I've been there for like five years now, so they have all of my information. Um, so it was like three pages of paperwork and I was like not even done with the first page. My doctor was like, you don't need to do that. <laughs> we already have all your information, so that was nice. Um, they took my weight and my blood pressure. I'm always very nervous about my blood pressure because I can get very anxious for these appointments. I mean, especially the first one because you know there's going to be an ultrasound. You know they're going to see like if the baby is viable or not. And so it's like, it's very nerve wracking. It's a lot of pressure. Um, and so like my heart's being really, really fast. I'm trying to like take deep breaths to keep calm and yeah, it's one of the problems I have <laughs> so she said it was good it was like 130 over something so hopefully it was good I don't know so they did that and my weight and then I had to leave a urine sample which I hate doing those but I'm gonna have to get used to it because I'm gonna have to do it monthly now so I did that and then went to my room and uh, met my doctor super nice I just kind of gave her the lowdown of I have very typical pregnancies. I don't ever have complications. Knock on wood. I don't know where any wood is around me, but knock on wood. And I told her my big thing is just my labors, my first 
pregnancy, I had a very easy labor. In my second pregnancy, it was fast and furious, like 20 minute labor. So I'm just nervous how this third one's gonna go, but that's obviously like months down the line. So it was just catching her up on all that. Then we did the ultrasound and at eight weeks, sorry, at eight weeks they do a transvaginal ultrasound because the baby's too little for them to like use it on your belly. So they did that, which is always not comfortable, but you do what you gotta do. And uh, she found the baby right away, which was really, really good. And we could see the heartbeat. So that was really good. I always look for that at the first ultrasound because I don't know how it is at your doctor's office, but my doctor's office, they don't let you hear the heartbeat until like the next appointment. At the first appointment, they just look to see like, is the baby there? Is it alive? Is it measuring right? Is there a heartbeat? But they don't listen to the heartbeat. So we did see the heartbeat. We saw the baby. It was really cool because we saw the baby wiggling around like it was actually moving and so it was amazing to see like at eight weeks like it already is starting to move and it was really cool to see. So that was really fun. Um, I have pictures. She printed off pictures so I'll show you guys. Let me go get it. Okay, so here it is. I'm trying to cover up like my personal information. But here it is, the little nugget. She called it a peanut. I thought that was really cute. But there's the baby. It literally looks like a blob. <laughs> like I think you can tell like the head is is like here and the butt is like down here. But it literally just looks like a blob. <laughs> so anyway, it was um, exciting to see that and have pictures. Um, I didn't take Anthony with me which was weird because my last, for my first two pregnancies, he went with me for the first appointment to see the baby on the ultrasound, but we're like still in a COVID world, and so they weren't allowing visitors to come, and so I had to go by myself. So I was happy to at least have pictures to take and show him. That was really cool. Um, they gave me a due date, and so my due date is April 5th which is really funny because my first pregnancy, Grayson, his due date was April 4th. Now he ended up being born on April 11th, a week later. So it'll be interesting to see what this baby does. I'm kind of determined to have this baby be a March baby. I wanna put as much time in between this baby's birthday and Grayson's birthday just for my sanity um, and I think it'd be fun to have a baby like in a different month but of course the baby's gonna come when it wants to come in my first two pregnancies I went past 40 weeks with both so this baby might be the same but I'm gonna try all the tips and tricks to to get the baby out as soon as I can. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Obviously it's way down the line, but yeah, so my due date is April 5th. And she said everything looked good, um, which is awesome. And they told me to come back in four weeks. So I scheduled another appointment for the end of September. So I'll go back when I'm, what is that, 12 weeks? Um, and hopefully my nausea will be better by then or starting to get better or maybe I'll still be miserable, we'll see. But yeah, that went really well and um, I think that's kind of it for this update. The video's already getting long, I can see it's like 21 minutes now. Um, so sorry that this was kind of long but I always feel like the first week there's like so much information I kind of have to catch you up on like zero to eight weeks. Yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe so you can see all of my weekly updates come out if I'm able to do the weekly updates. I'm going to try really hard to do it. If not, it'll be like bi-weekly. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Follow along with me um, during this pregnancy. I'm very excited to document it again. I had so much fun documenting my first two. Um, I'm going to do bump pictures as I go and uh, lots of exciting things coming up. We need to tell the kids that we're pregnant 
Not that they'll understand it that much since they're like four and two, but we're still gonna tell them. And then we're gonna tell our families and you know, make announcements on social media and just all the things that come with it. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe because you're not gonna wanna miss all the exciting updates I have to come. So this is me signing out on my eight week update. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.